So, should you buy Icarus? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about. This video is going to be based on my experience playing Icarus. And one thing to note before we get into the video, Icarus is currently 33% off during the Steam Summer Sale. The sale ends on July 7th, so if you have been eyeballing Icarus for a while, this might be a good time to get it. Alright, so what is Icarus? To cover the basics, Icarus is a mission-based survival game. The core gameplay revolves around starting with nothing and leveling up your character while working your way through different missions. These missions could be as simple as scanning a new area or as difficult as fighting bosses. At the start of missions, you will have nothing aside from your character. Doing most basic actions and missions, like chopping down trees or collecting stone, will reward your character XP. Once your character levels up, you will be granted points to spend towards unlocking character perks and crafting recipes. After the completion of any mission, you will be rewarded with currency. There are two types of currency in Icarus. First, you have rent. Rent is your basic form of currency which most items will be purchased with. The second currency is exotics. Exotics are a much more valuable currency, and they're used to purchase most high-end equipment. Both of these can be spent in the workshop. The workshop is a place where you can spend your hard-earned mission rewards on items that you can bring back into mission to help your progression. Okay, now that the basics are covered, let's move on to what I think the game does well and what I think it needs improvement on. Icarus at its core is a survival game that takes some of the best aspects from other games and combines it into one. It has all the basic survival elements as well as a good co-op experience that leads to some very fun and memorable moments. Being able to select different missions and outposts also allows for almost unlimited freedom and creativity. Being able to build whatever you want and explore the entire map. Icarus also has some very unique game mechanics such as mission timers and biome specific weather effects that can damage you and your base. In my opinion, it's all around a fun and enjoyable experience for anyone who likes challenging survival games. That being said, Icarus is a very challenging game for new players. Alright, so now let's move on to some of the things I think Icarus needs to improve on. I do want to say before I talk about any of the negatives, that none of these are game-changing problems that will completely ruin your experience. I'm also going to talk about potential fixes for these problems that I think would enhance the game. The biggest issue I have right off the bat is the progression system. Early game in Icarus is typical of any other survival game. It's challenging, and it's fun to learn new mechanics. But the late game is where Icarus starts to fall off. There are a few select items that I would consider late game. Most of these consist of tools in the workshop that require several hours of grinding to acquire and provide some type of buff to your character. Once you've acquired most of these items, I feel like the game loses a large amount of purpose. Sure, you can still complete the rest of the missions in the game just because you like doing them, but from my experience there's only so many times you can do the same thing in a different mission before it loses its meaning and becomes just another mission. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of unique missions in this game you can easily get 50 plus hours of enjoyment out of. But for me, one of my biggest motivations to play Icarus when I was starting was getting the best equipment. And once I got it, there wasn't really anything else to work towards. I still play Icarus very frequently just because it's a great game, but I do know players who quit after getting all the late game items. I do think that this has a really simple fix. In the future of the game, I would like to see certain items be locked behind missions or maybe acquired in missions as a reward. Currently, if you want any of these tools, the fastest way of acquiring them is to grind the same mission for hours on end. Alternatively, if the tools were locked behind later missions, that would create a reason to actively pursue the later missions. Having some type of endgame goal would also be a fantastic addition to the game. I don't have any ideas on what this endgame goal could be, since that really depends on the direction the devs decide to bring the game. Keep in mind, although Icarus is a fully released game, the dev team is still constantly updating it. We receive weekly updates, and there are large DLC packs planned for the future. Now, on to my second biggest problem with Icarus, the weather system. The weather system in Icarus is such a unique aspect that really sets Icarus apart from other games, but I think it needs improvement. The bad weather on Icarus is caused by the planet orbiting a gas giant called Minos. You can actually see Minos during nighttime while playing the game. Icarus orbiting a much larger planet causes immense tidal forces, thus creating unpredictable and catastrophic storms. The problem I have is that we don't get to see that in game. The storms we get in game could be compared to the storms that most people have seen in real life be it wind, snow, or lightning. When I first started playing Icarus and encountered my first heavy lightning storm, I was awestruck. Hearing a loud crack and a bright flash and then realizing that my entire base was on fire was terrifying and awesome at the same time. But after playing Icarus for over 100 hours, these storms that once posed a threat lost most of their meaning and became more of a nuisance than anything, forcing me to hide inside my base or the nearest cave until they were old. For storms that aren't even comparable to Earth storms, and they're said to be a hundred times worse, I think that there's a few ways to fix this. The first and most obvious is to just make the storms way worse. For instance, on Earth, 
the largest hurricanes are called a category five. That means wind speeds of 157 miles per hour or greater. And for you metric users out there, that's 252 kilometers per hour. At category five, these storms will flatten anything in their path, including reinforced concrete buildings. That's kind of scary. I know that if this was added in, it would be a game changing aspect. I'm not sure if the devs ever actually want to go in that direction, but I think it would really emphasize the struggle of being a prospector. Dropping down onto the planet and not knowing if you're going to have an easygoing mission with bluebird skies, or if a Category 5 hurricane is going to suddenly appear and force you to take shelter, would be a great change to the game in my opinion. There would also have to be some fundamental changes to how you play the game as well. For instance, building out in the open is no longer a viable option on longer missions. Instead, caves would be the safest place to build. This kind of leads into my third issue with Icarus, which is building. There is very little continuity in the game. Although this one is more of a minor complaint, I still hope that in the future the devs will address this. Speaking of which, if any devs see this video, hit me up in the comments. I would love to give you guys some free advice. That's coming from a player that truly enjoys the game. Anyways, I say that there's almost no continuity in the game, so let me give you an example of that. In your very first mission on Icarus, you're tasked with building a starter base leveling up, and hunting some animals. The first mission can be done in literally minutes. Now the second mission drops you in the exact same spot with a different objective. You might drop in and see that you're in the same area, and you might be thinking, cool, I can just use my base that I just made. But no, that base is now gone with no explanation other than a message that you get at the end of mission saying, if you leave this prospect, everything will be lost. I believe that the excuse for this in the game's lore is that a storm or some other natural disaster came by and destroyed your base while you weren't there. That's a perfectly fine excuse, except for the fact that you just built that base 10 minutes ago and it was a clear sunny day. And now you're in the same spot and there's not even a trace of your structure. Once again, I think that there's a good fix for this. The best option in my opinion is to have remnants or ruins of your old bases in future missions. And this should also come with some sort of indication that time has passed since your last mission. I don't think that ruins should stay forever though. My way around this is to only have ruined bases appear within the next one to two missions. Having a feature like this could bring so much to the game. Being able to see that there was some sort of human presence before your mission would make the mission so much more interesting. Having structures decay between missions could also be explained by the storms or other weather events. Storms could play a vital part in explaining a more convincing reason why your stone fortress that just took you hours to build is suddenly gone or in ruins. Storms could also explain why after one to two missions, the ruins of your base will also be completely gone. Having the option to rebuild or tear down the remnants of your prior base would also add a nice balance of not having to grind hundreds of resources every time you start a new mission. Personally, I think that this would be a great idea for a future update. So, now that I've covered some of the negatives, Let's go back to the question this video is supposed to answer. Is Icarus worth buying? Well, I would say yes. It provides such a unique experience to the survival genre that I do think it's worth the price. And with an extremely active dev team pushing out weekly updates and huge DLCs planned for the future, I don't think that you could go wrong if you're a survival fan. If this video helped you out in your decision making, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. And if you want, you can go watch this video. I'll see you next time.